Well, first to state that the, you cannot have good nutrition without good food. That, I think that has to be stated right from the, the onset. From Zambia's position, the challenges we've had uh, are to do with uh, the fact that we have basically been a mono crop supporter. We support corn, and that has basically been it without having to affect, um, shall we say, other crops. So I think our challenge is with diversification. Uh, right now, we are undertaking a program to diversify our crops. We are going to support soybeans, we are supporting rice, uh, we are supporting cassava, uh, we are supporting uh, wheat growing, because traditionally the, the groups that have produced the most food for the country, which provides the food security, are small and micro farmers. They're the ones that produce this. The, the commercial farmers tend to produce a limited quantity which they consume on their own farms. So in terms of the household security, in terms of the national uh, security, that is left basically to the small scale operators. So it is those small scale operators that we need to support. Now for most of them, they have only got a one crop in a year during the rainy season. So during the time that there is a the dry season, there is no irrigation, uh, and that's what we're working to achieve now, to improve their, their production, increase it probably twice in a year. For example, wheat is a winter crop for us. So June is the time when we should be, the, we, wheat should be in the field. Uh, and this is after the, the rainy season for us. The rainy season starts from November up to March. So that is what we are seeking to do. Um, the other thing is that um, the reports that we have now on the nutrition is that 45% of our children below the age of five are either malnourished or uh, undernourished. And that creates a challenge. And uh, as a result of that, we have high mortality rate for the under fives, infant mortality rate. So clearly what we want to do is to ensure that the children at that level are also provided with feeding. The other area that is of concern to us are the school going children. Uh, those that are going into primary school especially, that the food uh, programs are not sufficient. So one of the programs that we're undertaking is a school feeding program. That will help the farmers, the small scale farmers, to provide the resource, and then the, the, the education system will then take it up and ensure that the children are provided with food uh, at school, at school. And that will not only help with the attendance, improving attendance, but also then uh, the malnutrition can be tackled. Uh, right at that level, and that the children will have sufficient not only to fill their uh, tummies, but also to ensure that they have got sufficient um, nutrients, uh, sufficient for a, a growing child. But at the moment, these children are stunted, their growth is stunted, and that is worrying. 45% uh, of the children are stunted, they have got stunted growth. So this is one of the challenges that faces us, and that's what we're seeking uh, to work on uh, to ensure that um, we can improve on uh, the nutritional value but that means also increasing the production. We are fortunate in that uh, Zambia has uh, had a program of supporting small-scale farmers, and as a result of this, even if it was just for one crop, as a result of this, what has happened is that we have um, got uh, at least uh, uh, corn surplus, and we are supporting our neighbors as well. Uh, Zambia is located in the middle of Komesa and Sadik, and therefore some of our neighbors which do not have sufficient uh, Zimbabwe, Malawi, uh, Namibia, um, Congo, uh, Angola, this, especially the, the, the ages where we have the borders. Um, this, I think, has been a very challenging situation for most of our countries. There has not been enough food for everybody. But because we have had surplus uh, and the instructions from the president have been that nobody in the region should die of starvation uh, for food so long as Zambia has some food. So we provide to our neighbors as well, uh, even as far afield as Tanzania, uh, to know to provide for, for some of their requirements as well. Uh, into Burundi, we have provided for support in that particular area. So to that extent, I think that uh, our program of supporting small-scale farmers has been very successful. Okay. Now, but we want to extend this beyond maize, beyond corn. Uh, we want to support in other products, wheat, soybeans, um, sorghum, uh, millet, um, rice, that's what we're working to do at the moment. We have, um, about two weeks, two weeks ago, we approved the National Agriculture Investment Plan. Now, this investment plan 
Uh, its intention is to ensure that we do this, we undertake this diversification. The other thing we are doing at the moment is to invite private sector to come into the picture because we have set aside uh, 11 farming blocks, 11 farming blocks, one for each province of our country. Now, the farming blocks are intended to be places with about 100,000 hectares each, so that in there we've got a core venture uh, who is looking to improve the infrastructure. We're talking about uh, roads, we're talking about water, we're talking about power reticulation in those particular areas, in, in, the, in the farming blocks. And, and that will allow the huge um, investors, as well as the big commercial investors, medium-sized commercial investors, then there's emergent farmers, our own people, as well as the uh, small, and, uh, small farmers, small-scale farmers, who constitute, if you want, an outgrower program. They will be part of, part of that outgrower program. We hope that in this way, we can achieve this objective in a fa much faster manner uh, and ensure that, um, that uh, the, the, the program to, to, to involve private sector and also government participation is, 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 is fulfilled. We have just uh, had to make some adjustments to our subsidy program. We are subsidizing farmers at production level, but we have removed the consumption subsidy, which was going, you know, which was general to all the consumers, uh, including those that could afford. So we are now applying what we are calling smart uh, or targeted um, subsidies to ensure that only those that need the help are supported, and that's sort one of the other items that we are we are we are working on. Well, let's let's deal with uh, livestock first because I think that's uh, an important component. We all need meat. Um, so on the, in the case of um, the problems pertaining to our livestock, mostly they have to do with the disease. We have uh, two types mostly of disease, the CBPP uh, as well as the East Coast fever. These ravage our animal population very significantly. We have 10 provinces in our country. Of that, five provinces have got a huge presence of livestock, mostly cattle, uh, but also there are ruminants, you know, the small livestock that are in southern province, western province, eastern province, uh, central province, Muchinga province. These provinces, out of the 10, <clears throat> have got a fair amount, numbers of um, livestock. In fact, uh, in, in Africa, um, Botswana is renowned for exports uh, of livestock. They have fewer animals than we have. We have got approximately 3.3 million um, animals, mostly cattle. Um, so that's a, that's a big population. But most of it is ravaged by disease, and, and, and because of that, many of the um, head, uh, headsmen have lost their stock as a result of this. So one of the challenges that we have to address is to ensure that we've got uh, vaccines, developed vaccines that are unique to those uh, particular um, areas and, 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 and to deal with the animals. The second point with livestock is that we need more breeding stock. Uh, we haven't got sufficient breeding stock. So what we're trying to do in the National Agricultural Investment Plan is to create out of our um, uh, 11 uh, farming blocks, we are, pre we, are pre we are preparing enclaves, disease-free zones, so that we can be able to have breeding and ensure that we've got we increase in animal um, uh, uh, population uh, throughout. The third problem that we have is the common um, herding, you know, if you're pastures. Okay, this, this is important, and I'm sure that in many other parts of, of, of Africa, this has always been a problem for wars and fighting and so on and so forth between the different groups that are, have got have their animals uh, 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 fed. Uh, and so that is going to be a, a, an important component for us as well, um, and water availability. So the, the pasture and the water are critical you know, in this regard. So what we're doing is that in those um, farming blocks, we are creating these um, uh, uh, enclaves to ensure that we can be able to breed the animals and bring them up, even at local level, at small scale uh, level. So we, the idea is really to increase the number of uh, availability of meat uh, throughout, whether it is uh, lamb or it is uh, goats or chickens and poultry, which is another area that is of importance to us. Um, we are self-sufficient in, in terms of production of uh, eggs at the moment. But even there, we want to increase the, uh, the, the quantities that we can be able to export to the neighboring you know, countries. We are surrounded by eight neighbors, so these are all demanding uh, you know, consumption. And uh, then there's a big population in Katanga with 5.6 million people that require to be fed. So these are the areas that uh, we are concentrating on, so poultry, uh, and as well as uh, livestock uh, of, 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 of beef uh, animals in particular. So those, those are the areas that we're dealing with. And what challenges do you face with fisheries? 
Now, the fisheries side, um, you know Zambia has 40% of the water resource in Southern Africa, okay, subcontinent. It's both in rivers as well as lakes. And uh, because, of, uh, uh, because of that water availability, we should be doing a lot more fish, uh, no, uh, fish uh, growing and uh, fish uh, cr no, cropping. What we have had is a situation where uh, people have relied on the natural breeding in the rivers and the lakes. And these have depleted these stocks. Okay, and now we have to obviously do take deliberate steps that we create um, um, fish ponds outside the rivers and also to improve the fish farming so that people have got a livelihood. Because the reason why they've been going in the river is uh, to provide for their own uh, protein uh, as well as um, uh, to, to be able to have spare, to sell. So we want to use this 40% water resource in the lakes and the rivers to have uh, provide for the side um, if, if you're fish ponds, if you want. Uh, so fish farming has to be encouraged. So one of the things that we're doing is um, we are providing as part of our subsidy uh, products like fingerlings, uh, finger, fish fingerlings to ensure that people can be able to receive and also you know, breed them. Uh, so mostly it's tilapia that we, we produce. So freshwater fish should be a, a major export for Zambia because of the water resource that we have. Um, and so again, we are, we are emphasizing that there are uh, two, there are three uh, particular provinces of our country where this is most uh, common. Rwakula, uh, Western, as well as Southern, where the river, the Zambezi River, and the Rwangwa River, and the Kafue River, as well as the uh, Rwakula River pass. These are important for us in terms of meeting our own need, but also being able to provide uh, other fish products, including stock feed uh, from the waste that you, know, you have from the you know, fish farming. So at the moment, we are a net importer of fish, would you believe, given the water resource. And so this is why we, we must change uh, this culture and not one of our programs and that's why we're here to deal with the fisheries as well uh, is to do just that and, uh, and I'm sure that when my colleague came from the environment he must have talked about these issues we're working with them to make sure that uh, the, you know, the water heads are protected that the trees in the water heads are protected because we need the rivers to be able to provide for this kind of ca capacity uh, for us so I think those are important areas um, apart from what we've already discussed in agriculture the livestock as well as uh, included there is poultry, as well as uh, fisheries, uh, which is an, a very, very important uh, component uh, of what we're doing as part of our National Agricultural Investment Plan.